So before you even think about buying a hot tub for your holiday cottage, you need to do your research. There are other sections in this series which will cover the rules, risks and responsibilities of ownership. But assuming you've done that, then uh, there are other considerations that you need to take into account because it's a major investment and you want it to last and benefit your business for a long time. So, size matters. If you're putting a hot tub into a commercial situation like a holiday cottage, then you need to make sure that the hot tub is at least big enough for the maximum number of occupants of the cottage. If you have a larger cottage, then you really need to, going to need to have maybe two or put in a commercial style hot tub, which has commercial filtration, which can take the increased bather load. A smaller domestic hot tub is not going to be suitable in that setting. So those massive eight-seater hot tubs look amazing, but you do need to check with an electrician and make sure that you have sufficient power because they often take uh, 32 amps. So make sure you get it checked. Now, this is a key consideration if you're buying a hot tub for your business because the amount of insulation will affect your overall running costs over the life of the hot tub. So buying a cheap one, which costs you a lot more to run, you'll quickly run out of the savings that you made initially. Two things to look at. Firstly, the cover, how thick it is to stop evaporation through the top, but also the casing. With energy prices where they are at the moment, this is obviously going to be a key consideration and will be a major element of your costs. There are three things which will impact on how quickly your hot tub heats up. One is the volume of water. Second is the temperature at which the, wa the clean water is coming in. And the third is the size of the heater. A lot of cheaper hot tubs have very small heaters. And if you've got guests arriving that day, they will expect it to be up to temperature. So make sure you take that into account. It is also worth looking at putting a hot water fill in outside, which will speed up the operation considerably. So hot tubs are sensitive little creatures and you'll need a wide array of different chemicals to make sure that the water is in balance. The area that you have the most choice over is the choice of disinfectant or sanitizer as it's known in the trade. The most commonly used ones are chlorine and bromine and they have different advantages and disadvantages. There's a separate um, FAQs on different chemicals and what they do and how to use them and we'll also be talking more about chemicals a bit later. This is an important uh, consideration because there's a large volume of water you're trying to get rid of. Firstly, is it easy to access the ports? Not all models have easy discharge ports. If you want to speed it up, then you can get a small electric pump, which will then empty the hot tub in about 10 minutes, which speeds up turnaround times. If you are in a rural setting, you have to be particularly careful about where to put the water. Um, you can't discharge large volumes of water into your septic tank because you will upset the biological balance of the tank. So you could think about soakaways or you could think about dechlorinating the water and maybe saving it to recycle by putting it on the garden. The weight of the hot tub is going to be important. A full hot tub for four to five people is going to weigh about 1500 kilograms, so you can't just park it on the lawn. You need a solid concrete base, which can obviously then be tiled or decked to make it more attractive. So when you're siting the hot tub, it's important to get it as close as possible to the cottage. And if you have gravel paths, then remember to put lily pads in so that bare feet aren't walking on gravel. Generally, planning permission won't be required because hot tubs are considered to be mobile structures. But obviously, if you're going to put something like a building over the top of it, like a gazebo, you might need to seek advice because in some areas like conservation areas or if your building is listed or if you have a section 106, then it may not be possible to do it without planning permission. It's worth taking advice from your local authority. These are obviously very important for any holiday cottage owner because they will determine your margin. 
Running costs, if you look it up on Google, tend to look a lot lower than they are in reality. It's worth checking with other commercial hot tub operators. The statistics given out by salesmen and online tend to be for domestic tubs, but you're going to be emptying it between every guest, reheating it. You'll be using a lot more chemicals than the average domestic user, so make sure you get these sums right. This is an important consideration because when hot tubs are running, they're pretty noisy. So you find that people tend to talk a lot more loudly than they would in normal conversation. So proximity to other cottages or to neighbours is important. You need to make sure that it's not going to cause a nuisance. This is an important consideration in a commercial setting because you are going to need to make sure that the hot tubs are checked daily. HSDG 282, which we will refer to in a later film, uh, suggests that you check at least twice a day. You also need to uh, make sure that it's being done by a competent person, which means there's absolutely not acceptable to let the guests do the chemicals themselves. And if you don't live on site, this is an important consideration because you have to pay someone else to do it, then that is going to impact on your margin and the benefits that hot tubs will bring you. So with bathers hopping in and out of the hot tub, the floor is going to be wet and this is obviously going to present a, a risk of slippage. So you need to take reasonable steps to prevent this. Frequent pressure washing of outdoor areas will stop a build-up of algae and you can treat decked and tiled areas with anti-slip coatings. So it's worth getting your water checked before you get a hot tub because it will affect the management. If you have hard water, then it will scale up the um, parts of the hot tub. If you have soft water, it can be corrosive. These are both controllable with chemicals. If you're on a private water supply in particular, you may have high levels of minerals and these can interact with the sanitizers to turn the water brown. Again, that's something that you can counteract uh, with chemicals. And the water needs to be safe to drink and it needs to meet all water regulations. And if you're on a private water supply in particular, then do make sure that your supply doesn't tend to dry up in the summer. There are three main types of hot tub that you might be looking at. One is inflatable. These are absolutely not acceptable in a commercial situation because you cannot comply with HSG 282. And that's mostly because you can't have inline chemical dispensation, uh, but also the filtration is probably not sufficient. Wooden hot tubs are becoming more popular. These often have a wooden body. They're just heated water. They don't have any jets. They need to be changed between each use, not between each guest, and that is your responsibility to do, not the guests. And you also be, need to be aware that with the, the wood-fired heaters, there is a risk of burns from hot pipes. They also need to be disinfected between each set of guests. The third and most common type are either going to be the rigid body hot tubs or the wooden hot tubs with a liner. These require constant inline chemical dosing systems, a simplified control system and high performance filters. These are just a few of the considerations you'll need to take into account if you're thinking about putting a hot tub in your holiday let.